In this video, I'll demonstrate and explain the multi-axis mechanisms that the MPIEC controller can operate using Mechatrolink servos. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. Here's a quick preview. The MPIEC controllers can use Mechatrolink servos to directly control a variety of mechanisms, including gantries, HBOTs, TBOTs, Core XY, Delta robots, and Scara robots. They are all set up using groups and the hardware configuration. Kinematic equations in the controller firmware produce multi-axis coordinated motion to control the servos of these specialized mechanisms. Now, let's look at this in more detail. The MPIEC controller can use PLC Open Part 4 programming for virtually any type of multi-axis mechanism. So it is not limited to just gantries, HBOTs, TBOTs, Core XY, Delta robots, and Scara robots. But whatever the mechanism, kinematic equations are required. These kinematic equations convert the positions in the coordinate workspace to positions of the servo axes that actually move the mechanism. These kinematic equations can reside in the application code of the MPIEC controller, within some type of external controller, or within the MPIEC firmware. In this video, we'll focus on mechanisms supported by the MPIEC firmware, but let's consider briefly the case where kinematic equations exist in the application code. You start by using PLC Open Part 4 to program the coordinated motion in a virtual gantry mechanism. Then write kinematic equations in MotionWorks IEC to convert the gantry positions to positions of the custom mechanism. The block Y Group Direct Control will send the converted positions to the individual servo axes of the custom mechanism. This method is very flexible and can be used for any mechanism but it's also programming intensive, and it requires a thorough understanding of the mechanism in order to write the kinematic equations in the application code. Programming can be a lot easier if the kinematic equations exist in an external controller, such as the YRC1000. You still start with PLC Open Part 4 programming, and the MPIEC controller converts this programming to network commands, and the external controller coordinates the motion of the servo axes. This reduces the programming complexity, but it does require this external controller. For gantries, HBOTs, TBOTs, Core XY, Delta robots, and Scara robots, we eliminate the external controller and the kinematics in the application code by including the kinematic equations in the firmware of the MPIC controller. You still use PLC Open Part 4 programming to produce coordinated motion, but the servo axes are controlled directly over Mechatrolink. Details and options for these mechanisms are defined in the hardware configuration of MotionWorks IEC. I'm using version 3.7. This MP3300 IEC project has a number of Mechatrolink 3 servos. Below this, the groups are a collection of servo axes that control a particular mechanism. The group name is used to program the coordinated motion for that mechanism. Let's start by looking at the group for the gantry mechanism. You see the axes assigned to the mechanism as labeled in the diagram. You have probably seen something like this before. Actuator X moves actuator Y. And so the tool plate can move in two dimensions of Cartesian coordinate space. There are lots of variations and types of gantry systems and technically there is no kinematic equation necessary for these. There are several options here. Under mechanism 3D gantry, adds the vertical Z axis for three dimensions, and the N dimensional gantry gives you this machine coordinate system button. In this way you can add axes that angle the tool, such as roll, pitch, and yaw. You have up to six degrees of freedom and therefore six servo axes. Let's say we were controlling this gantry. You see the x-axis motor has a long shaft and drives two actuators at once. 
but it is also common to use a separate motor for each actuator. In this case, you would simply use add secondary axis. Both the primary axis and the secondary axis will be synchronized. If the tool itself has a servo axis, such as an extruder for 3D printing, then you would click add axis and enter the name. This auxiliary axis is excluded from moves commanded with the MC Cartesian ref data type with only 6 degrees of freedom. One such block from Yaskawa's group toolbox library is MC Move Path, and it is fundamental for 3D printing. The auxiliary axes do respond to standard PLC Open Part 4 blocks such as MC Group Stop. These blocks use the vector data type with up to 32 degrees of freedom. Now on to the HBOT. The HBOT is a mechanism with two stationary motors driving a single belt. The belt is attached at one side of the tool plate and routed through a series of pulleys. If just one motor turns, the tool plate moves at 45 degrees. When the motors turn in the same direction, the tool plate moves in the X direction. When the motors turn in opposite directions, the tool plate moves in the Y direction. An HBOT is most often used in the horizontal plane with uh, coordinates X and Y. However, you can also change that to X and Z, add Y as the third dimension, and RZ to rotate the tool. Set Kinematics lets you specify shaft rotational direction relative to the diagram. And mechanism HBOT2 has the belt connection point at the opposite side of the tool plate. Graphically, there's just a very small difference between HBOT1 and HBOT2. But that difference is important for the kinematic equations inside the controller firmware. HBOTs are an economical and stable mechanism capable of high speed and wide range of sizes, often used for path generation or pick-and-place applications. Very similar to the HBOT is the TBOT, the T-Bot also has two stationary motors that drive a single belt routed through a series of pulleys. And just like the H-Bot, the T-Bot's motors work together to move the tool plate in two dimensions. If just one motor turns, the tool plate moves at 45 degrees. When the motors turn in the same direction, the tool plate moves in the X direction. When the motors turn in opposite directions, the tool plate moves in the Z direction. T-Bots are often mounted vertically for pick-and-place applications. And if this is the case, under Machine Coordinate System, you can select the XZ plane with the optional third Cartesian dimension, Y, and tool rotation, RZ. Set Kinematics has shaft rotation definition for positive movement. T-Bot Style 1 has the belt attached at the tool plate. TBOT2 has the belt attached at the top and a pulley at the tool plate. Like HBOTs, the TBOT mechanism is an economical solution suitable for high speed pick and place of medium loads over a wide range of lengths. Core XY kinematics are identical to the HBOT and TBOT, even though the layout is distinct. It is a mechanism driven by two stationary motors with not one, but two belts connected to the load. The two belt design reduces racking and uneven forces, resulting in smooth motion, 
Smooth motion, along with relatively small size, makes the Core XY mechanism desirable for 3D printing. A Delta robot has the base on the top and uses three motors. Each motor drives a base leg joined to a platform leg, and all the legs join at the moving platform where the tool plate is connected. Delta robots are exceptionally fast, especially with light loads, making them ideal for pick-and-place applications involving small parts. Yaskawa currently manufactures two Delta robots, the MPP-3H and the larger MPP-3S. Both of these robots have the option of the rotational axis at the tool plate and use custom Delta if you have a third-party Delta robot with Yaskawa servos. In this case, use Set Kinematics to enter the critical dimensions of the mechanism. Notice that Set Kinematics allows customized joint base angles. That is to say, the base leg angles don't have to all be 120 degrees. Other kinematic properties include radii, offsets, and lengths that define the robot. The two-axis version of a Delta robot is called a Delta II. This mechanism also excels at high-speed pick-and-place of small payloads in the X and Z dimensions, plus an optional rotational axis RZ. Use set kinematics to define the machine layout. The SCARA mechanism layout is somewhat like a human arm with two links and a motor at each of the three joints. It may also have a mechanism to raise and lower the tool in the Z direction. It is relatively fast and often used for pick and place or assembly processes. Since a SCARA mechanism has compliance in the X, Y direction, that makes it somewhat forgiving, for example, to insert a pin into a hole. Any SCARA with this layout that uses Yaskawa servos can be defined in MotionWorks IEC under Set Kinematics. Collision and breakage can be avoided by establishing software limits that define the range of motion for each axis. Every mechanism has these settings to limit motor position, speed, and acceleration. Additionally, the Delta Robot, Delta II, and Scara Robot mechanisms, which are more complex, can use the machine limits that correspond to the movement of the tool within the Cartesian workspace. This table shows the mechanisms currently supported for the MP3000 IEC series controllers. Delta robots, Scara robots, gantries, HBots, TBots, and Core XY can all be controlled at the firmware level by the MP3000 IEC series. Programming is the same for all mechanisms using PLC Open Part 4. If you want some hands-on experience with these mechanisms, check out our training class on robot control. Thanks for watching this video, and go to yaskawa.com slash IECSW to download the latest version of MotionWorks IEC 3.